This is Chapter 14, Financial Statement Analysis. This um, chapter has four learning objectives, and what we'll do in the first presentation, we'll do one through three, and then the last one is, is really the hardest one, um, and we'll do a full one on this. But for the first, we'll do horizontal and vertical analyses of the financial statements, and then prepare and use common size statements. And this, this is not just an accounting thing, all right? This is done when you're comparing companies or trying to evaluate performance within a company all the time. And it, it can really provide good insight. So first, the horizontal analysis. Um, so when you think about horizontal, think year to year. Okay, so think about going across the top of a financial statement from say 2020 to 2019. This would be a year to year comparison of the company's performance in, in different periods. Okay, it could be quarter, quarter to quarter too, or um, like the quarter from last year to the quarter from this year. But in any event, it's from one period to the next, okay? Whereas vertical analysis is a way of looking at the relative size of each line item in the financial statements. Okay, so if you're on the income statement, you could compare the percent of certain expenses to total sales, all right? And then compare that maybe to another company in the same industry to see if you're, if you're you know, out of whack, if you're spending too much money someplace, or maybe there's some other adjustments you could make. And then ratio analysis evaluates the relationship between key components of the financial statements. For example, if my net income is $100,000, how much in assets did it take to earn that 100000 Okay, so it looks at relationships like just within the statements um, and also between the statements, between the two. And the company we're going to use for this is the Supermart, and this is right out of the textbook. You know, and it, it's fine. It's a good example. And it has, um, you know, when you look at these numbers, okay, they had 858000 in sales, and gross profit was 345, and net income is 48. Year before it was 26, and that's more, so that's good. But what do we really know about it? You know, when you look at whole numbers, you can't really draw conclusions. So here's the balance sheet, and I hope this is big enough for you. Okay, I mean it's a little bit better there, but this is um, this is balance sheet for the same period of time. You can see that they've got some cash, okay, some receivables. Receivables have also gone up, but that makes sense because sales went up. Um, but when you look at it, you can see property, plant, and equipment also increased. So they must have invested more here, more in fixed assets, all right? <clears throat> and what else do we have? Common stock. They didn't issue any common stock. Retained earnings would increase by the amount of net income. All right, minus dividends. But again, when you're just looking at whole numbers like this, it's hard to tell what you're looking at. All right, so we'll take it apart a little bit. And the first way we're going to do it is doing a horizontal analysis, and that is looking at percentage changes in comparative statements. And the, the um, key part to remember is this piece right here. Okay, we're going to look at you have to calculate a percentage change and what you want to remember is to use the earlier period as your base and I'll show you what you mean okay so we, we first of all we see what the difference is and when we take that difference and divide it by the base and that's what tells us our percentage change so here's an example this is um, um, like their change in sales I don't have the income statement here, but the sales were 858 in 2017 and 803 in 2016, so the increase is 55,000. So then we just take the 55,000 divided by 803, and we get a 6.8% increase. All right, and the key thing here to remember is that you divide it by the base year, by the earliest year. All right? And here is an example. Um, we've got the years here, 2017 and 2016. There's the change in the account. And then here is each number divided by 2016. All right, so what's kind of interesting here, um, taxes went up by 
Oh, no, no, income before tax, sorry. Well, tax is increased by 42%. Okay, then it starts to tell you something. It tells you operating income increased by 77%. All right, and gross profit went up by 17.3. Operating increases had a slight increase. All right, but you can see, you can easily see where the major changes were by looking at the, um, at the changes from year to year. All right, it just helps you focus on maybe something that you want to study a little bit further. And the same thing with the balance sheet. I've got 2017, 2016, so my latest year and my earliest year, the change in the account divided by the earlier year. So we can see the cash went down, current assets decreased, but property, plant, and equipment went up by 27%. Okay, um, and also they borrowed money. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the accounts payable went up by 55%. Okay, long-term liabilities. That's our total. Uh, no, no, no. Total long-term liabilities. This is um, also. This is a separate account. That also went up by 46%. So it looks like they borrowed money, and then perhaps purchased some property, plant, and equipment with it. Okay. But how much did they borrow? They have. Okay. So we have. Okay, an increase of 91,000 here, and uh, the current, what was the other one here? Well, 15,000 for the note. So that just about accounts for what they spent on fixed assets. That's just about right. Okay, statement of cash flows would um, tell us more about it. So that is a horizontal analysis. <laughs> now, the other thing that's interesting is that like a trend percentage, and it's like a horizontal analysis, but it takes a look at a business over a longer period of time. So you select your base year, and that's equal to 100%. And then you take every, every year is expressed as a percentage of the base. So it increases, it's going to be like 105%. Okay, and if it decreases, it'll, it'll be you know, less than 1%. And here's an example, um, you know, and sales is a really good number to look at. Everything comes off sales. So we've got 2012 um, is our base year, and we've got 2012 through 2017, and sales went up from 600,000 to 858,000. And you can see there's a 3% increase, then 5, then 7, then a big jump here. 15, 19% increase here, am I right? One nine, one nine, yeah, and then another big jump from 2016 to 17. So what's good about this longer perspective is you can say, oh, that's when the, you know, when the stock market really started to go up, or if it decreases, you can say, well, that's when we had that big loss, you know, when the, um, you know, the SNL crisis or some kind of a dot com bust. Okay, something like that. But this is really helpful to look at over time. And it also helps you find aberrations when things just don't seem right. So we use analyses like this um, literally really a lot more than you'd think. And there's the trend line. Okay, there's just sales. A trend line, you know, a picture says a thousand words. This, this, um, this says a lot. Like if everything was nice and straight and you had a steady percentage all the time, Okay, you wouldn't expect anything to be any different. But here we've got this big increase. Okay, it goes up. So what's going to happen from 2017 to 2018? All right, that's the question. That's what's tricky when things are change, changing like this. Would you forecast it to be flat? Or do you think it would increase? Or would it stay on the same track that it was? So you'd look at macroeconomic variables and um, other information just about the industry to try to figure out what's happening. Okay, like medical stock, for example. I, I'm not familiar with it, but it's probably really going up now. Okay, so now the vertical analysis, and that's like within, um, within the same year. So this is the relationship of each item to the base. And usually the base is either going to be total sales or total assets. Okay, so we'll look at each income statement line as a percentage of total sales or each balance sheet line as a percentage of total assets, okay? And here is the income statement, and this is good. Like, you can see that um, for this company, cost of goods sold is almost 60% of their cost, okay? Taxes are, where are taxes? Oh, 
okay? Operating expenses are 28%. So if you looked at changes in these numbers over time, that also tells you something. Then the other thing this says is that we're getting about five cents on a dollar ends up in net income. Okay, so that's pretty good information. Um, and you want to see maybe if you could improve that number or, or uh, you know, reduce your cost of goods sold somehow or increase your sales, one of the two. But um, you'd have to know more about it. Okay, so that's vertical analysis. And again, sales revenues are set to 100%. Okay, and when we do the balance sheet, it's the same thing. Balance sheet is the same thing, only it's total assets and total liabilities and equity are, are set to 100%. And as you know, okay, these numbers are the same, 787. And we can see that what's happened here, um, inventory, property, plant, and equipment is big. It's 65% total assets. All right. Here are our liabilities. Uh, Long-term liabilities are a third of our liabilities. Um, equity is 45%. So when you look at this company, okay, you can say that they're financed by debt and equity. They're financed by debt is 55% and financed by equity at 45%. So slightly risky-ish, okay? Okay, so now the last piece, this is the third objective already, the last piece are um, common size financial statements, and I like these. I like these a lot, because you can compare a company against competitors, or within industry averages, all right, all of this information is published and available. Um, I'll show you a couple of good databases where, where you can find these numbers if you're interested in it. And then common size statements, these are used to prepare companies to each other because you can't compare with whole numbers. All right, we need percents. So what we've got is, um, it, well, it just purport, reports only percentages and the, you use, use the percentages from the vertical analysis. Okay, so then you can compare companies, and you can have a really small company and compare it to a big one and see if, if you can benchmark against them, all right, where you might be off if you're growing. It's the kind of thing you want to watch. So here is Supermart and Target, all right, and um, this is pretty good. So we've got our cost of goods sold. It's less for Supermart than it is for Target. Okay, operating expenses are higher at Supermart than Target's, okay, as, as a percentage of total sales, so that's good to know. You'd want to know more about those numbers. And then um, you can see that Supermart earns 5.6%, um, no, about 5, 5 to 6% cents on a dollar, whereas Target earns 4.5. Okay, so even though the sales here might be a lot larger, Okay, the margin is tighter, you know, but maybe the prices are lower, you know, that um, all, that can have all kinds of meanings. So that's what is in the first four problems in my accounting lab. So, and these are straightforward, but you've got a lot of problems in here to do. So this would be a good time, like right now, to do these four problems and you'd be all set. Okay, I think you've got three tries on them. All right.